had requested the chief of police to, in fact, uh, review material related to uh, noise at entertainment. And you had requested that he be here this evening to make a presentation to you on his recommendations with regards to that matter, and he is here. So I will defer to him before I go back to the warrant articles I have. Let's see if we can get this working again. It was up and running. There we go. Hold on. It was working beautifully. <laughs> the way it did it. And there you go. There you go. All right, the uh, direction of the town manager, um, we want to take a look at some of the issues that we were having uh, regarding our entertainment issues. And as far as any potential amendments that we would like to make, and I apologize, I'm trying to get this, there we go. So our current entertainment ones. And this is more of an overview for everybody at home. I think a lot of folks get kind of lost in the, uh, and a lot of questions asked after the hearings we had about what was what. Is this noise? Is this entertainment? Where does this apply? Where does it apply? So I also did this for the benefit of the voters, considering some uh, potential amendments to the ordinance. Entertainment in places assembly is licensed by the town. Uh, that became uh, a separate entity from our dance hall permits. Uh, and some of the machine, uh, the uh, entertainment, the uh, coin operated machine ordinance that we had, and some of this was kind of slipping in between. So an entertainment ordinance was developed. The current ordinance was adopted in 2010, amended in 2014, and again, that's why we're here tonight. Possible amendments being sought for the 2018 town meeting. Our current noise standards. Beginning at noontime to 11 p.m., 75 decibels uh, at a scale of A. Late night, 11 p.m., uh, that shouldn't say 1 a.m., that should say uh, 11.59 is 50 decibels. Music stops at midnight. Obviously, we've had some issues with it. We've got a conflict between our residential folks down there that abut our business district. Resounding theme I'm hearing uh, from these folks is they want the peaceful enjoyment of their property and they don't feel with the current ordinance and the way we enforce it that that's being accomplished. One of the things we're experiencing is the number of noise complaints regarding these facilities. Um, our first outdoor deck bar was introduced uh, about the mid-90s at the corner of L Street where Bernie's now sits in the old Lebec Rouge. The businesses, they have a short season, so they're looking to maximize their opportunity on noise levels and max miles of operation due to the short summer season. And we're talking probably a maximum 12-week season where they get it <coughs> seven days a week. We have a little bit of the preseason, postseason with our festivals, but those are really weekend-driven. Prior to this, we only had one outdoor entertainment uh, venue, Hampton Beach, and that's the State Park Seashell, which I'll mention from my experience and measurements that I've taken, is the loudest outdoor entertainment facility we have in the town. But they are not subject to our ordinances. It's a state facility, and they've declared their sovereignty on those these types of issues. Part of the issue that is bringing this upon us is the growth we've experienced in Hampton, uh, particularly down at the beach. Since 2010, we've had over $260 million in commercial and residential growth. The town of Hampton has pitched in, new police department in 2005 to keep up, a new fire facility down at the beach in 2013, and the state also in 2014, a $14 million renovation to the, uh, the seashell and the new bathhouses north and south of those location, that location. It's led to a lot of things. Our recognition is, is a one of the top tourist locations, not just in New England, on all of the eastern seaboard. We've been recognized as one of the top ten beaches uh, several years in a row. Recently, number one boardwalk in the USA, and I believe Selectman Barnes mentioned we've also been listed as a top tourist destination 
are one of the friendliest tourist destinations mm -hmm. in the country. So a lot of these things, this growth, has brought a lot of people into the community. Having grown up at the beach since 1979, I can tell you the crowds we experience on Saturdays and Sundays. It, it, it's just, it's going through the roof. So the biggest issue we're dealing with is, is the competing rights that people are expressing. Peaceful enjoyment, but the right to conduct their business. I brought this up in a fr uh, previous memo, and this is from probably the most influential case dealing with music. It, this is the Ward versus Rock Against Racism. What this case was is the city of New York was sponsoring the Rock Against Racism and brought in a promoter by the name of Ward. But one of the things they were dealing with was noise issues in the location they were going to have this concert. And the city tried to uh, compel the promoter to utilize only sound amplification devices provided by the city, which he felt was not in compliance with the contract that they had or sufficient for the entertainment they were going to provide. But this is one of the, uh, the quotes that came, uh, famous quotes that came out of the, uh, the decision from the Supreme Court, and that's music is one of the oldest forms of human expression from Plato's discourse in the Republic to the totalitarian state in our own times. Rules have known its capacity to appeal to the intellect and the emotions and have censored musical compositions to serve the needs of the state. The Constitution prohibits any like attempts in our own legal order. What it also came out with uh, in support of the government is in war the Supreme Court ruled that the government may impose reasonable time place restrictions that are narrowly tailored to serve a significant government interest. So that's what we're really talking about here. The restrictions in our ordinance is that time place restrictions narrowly tailored to serve a significant government interest. The, compete, the competing uh, issue is the property owner. Under New Hampshire law, nuisance exists when an activity substantially and unreasonably interferes with the use and enjoyment of another, <coughs> of another person's property. So those are the two competing point of views that we're trying to deal with and mitigate the situation. So how do we balance this? This is a copy of the permanent injunction um, from what's commonly referred to as the preacher case where officers of the Hampton Police Department took into custody two gentlemen that were uh, using amplification to preach down at the beach, and after being told to cease and desist, they were arrested for disorderly conduct. The town entered into this agreement, uh, into this permanent junction uh, in the U.S. District Court in Concord with Judge LaPlante, and what it reads is the defendants, their agents, employees, and all persons active or concerted participation without hereby enjoined for enforcing or applying New Hampshire RSA 644-2, which is disorderly conduct, so as to preclude the plaintiff's speech activities in traditional public foray, including but not limited to the Hampton Beach Village District, Ocean Boulevard, and downtown Hampton. <coughs> and the hours of 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. provided any electronically amplified speech activities do not consistently exceed <coughs> a decibel level of 80 decibels from a distance of 65 feet. So you've heard me speak many times about where we should be taking measurements from and decibel levels being enforceable. This is one of the areas where I draw upon is how do we balance this issue? Well, legal decisions, setting precedent. And I think we have one right here. We also want to look at the science of it. This is from the National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders. This is part of the National Health Institute, and this is based on noise-induced hearing loss. Sound is measured in units called decibels. Sounds of less than 75 decibels, even after long exposure, are unlikely to cause hearing loss. However, long or repeated exposure to sounds at or above 85 decibels <coughs> can cause hearing loss. The louder the sound, the shorter the amount of time it takes for noise-induced hearing loss to happen. Now, here's some examples the average ratings are some familiar sounds. Now, I think I've spoken a couple times here regarding the decibel level. I know just because of my voice, I'm generally around 65 decibels speaking as I am tonight. You can see normal conversation is 60 decibels, which, again, was my concern with the ordinance at 50 decibels. How do we enforce a level that's below normal conversation? 
coming from an entertainment facility. I don't feel we can reasonably do that. I don't think the court would ex accept anything of that nature. You can see some of the other levels, uh, the motor noise from heavy traffic, 85 decibels. It is not unusual to be down on Hampton Beach standing outside an establishment when the music isn't playing to get decibel readings that loud. So our solutions, an amendment to our current ent ent uh, excuse me, entertainment activities. Considering the competing issues we have between the businesses and the residents, I thought the best thing was to give you the, the board a couple of options that they may decide to move forward on. My first op option, permit sound levels up to 75 decibels during legal hours of operation. That means all legal hours of operation. All outdoor entertainment activities are to con be concluded by 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, 11.59 p.m. Friday and Saturday. So what this gives us is it gives us a little bit, maintains the decibel level we have right up to 11 o'clock now, and then on Friday and Saturday they get an additional hour at that decibel level. It does shave an hour off the operating hours because uh, the current ordinance right now uh, is, no, pardon me, 11.59 is the appropriate time for Friday and Saturday, but on Sunday and Thursday we're shaving an hour off. I think that's something similar that you did with a license that was in question earlier this year um, where we limited it during the week. <coughs> Option number two is increase the sound level to 65 decibels from 11 p.m. to 11.59, maintain the sound level of 75 decibels from 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. currently exists. The importance of the 65 decibels is something I can enforce. 50 decibels is just, I don't know how we could possibly enforce uh, that decibel reading from 11 to 11.59. If I was going to be asked to suggest the one I would pick the most optimal for the town to adopt, I would recommend option one. And if there's any questions. So for option one, it would be taking the current ordinance as it stands, 75 decibels to 11 for every day. That's how it is right now, correct? Mm -hmm. And then the difference would be Friday and Saturday, you would extend that 75 till 11.59. For 59 minutes, yeah. Okay, thank you. The reason I made that option was looking at what, where we went with it last year and the issues that the people raised was those midweek items, because remember the season extends beyond, you know, before the, before the summer and after the summer where we, we have kids and people have to get up for work, uh, kids getting to school, getting up for those type of things that, you know, Sunday through Thursday I felt it was reasonable to, to stop the music at 11. But that's for everybody. That's not just for, under the ordinance, you folks have the, the right to put con additional conditions on any license you issue. This just lowers that bar. So you're knocking it down to 11 o'clock Sunday through Thursday, so nobody's license could exceed that throughout the town of Hampton if this was adopted. Okay, thank you, Chief. And you, you're still talking taking that reading? Would you say 80 feet from the building? Uh, no, we take the we take the reading from the point of the complaint. I just want to make sure that's yeah. That that I know there was some folks that thought you know I I know because I participated in the development of that portion of the ordinance. It was always the intent that the reading would be based on a complaint and that the reading that was going to be used with, uh, to determine whether it was in violation was going to be from the point of the complaint. Uh, we had dwelled on potentially doing a distance um, and that may be more feasible. The only question is, you know, we're going to have to measure that distance when we go to take, take the readings. Okay. But I think I just want to make sure that, yep. was, that was out yep. there. Phil? Negative, sir. Thank you, Chief. And of course, this still means that a business can remain open until one o'clock. Correct. They all they have to do is they have to turn off the outdoor entertainment. So a place could still be serving food. They could still be serving alcohol, but they could not have the music point. My only uh, point would be giving the business one extra night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 
that would that would be that would be my compromise. That we give one extra, you know, that, that we're given five nights of quieted down and give three nights for a weekend. That would be my opinion. I would say usually you want to do Sunday because most of your three day weekends are Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. So. We do have Memorial Day and Labor Day falling in there, and the occasional Fourth of July that will fall on a Monday. So that would be three days. So what are we doing tonight? We're, we're, we're putting together a Warren article to or an amendment to the Warren article. I think that's what you're going to tell me. Okay. All right. And based upon the recommendation, or you're going to tell me not to proceed with anything. Okay. So. Okay. I, I would like to amend the recommendation to three to a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. If I may. Yep. Um, one of the points you brought up, you may want, pardon me, also want to consider is, do you want to put something in about those holidays? Especially so you're not holidays. dealing with, if you have a, a Tuesday night, 4th of July, you know what I mean, so that you, to include in that language whatever you choose and holidays, or maybe identify the summer holidays that are important so you know those dates. Okay, Memorial Day, 4th of July. Yeah. Labor Day. that enforceable? Yeah, so long as we're aware, as long as it's codified in, in the yeah. ordinance, uh, so just so I'm clear, you still want to include um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the 11:59, plus any holidays that fall during the week. Yeah. So. And so all all businesses that would be subject to the entertainment license would be governed by these same. Yep. Correct. Subjects. Take Sunday out, Monday. So it'll read. All outdoor entertainment activities are concluded by 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 11.59 p.m. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and legal holidays. You put legal holidays under RSA 288. Then you have a statutory reference to what holidays are. The only thing I say is be cautious on that because you don't, you know, what is your intention? Is it during the summer? Do you include that? Well, you need to include that if it's going to be just summer. I don't think entertainment locations yeah. are going to be on, you know, January Still, yeah. 1st, but be cautious about what you're approving. Either that or, or, or enumerate the holidays, one of the two. I think this works. Because I don't think we're going to get many things past Columbus Day. Most of the things shut down there, Most but you never are shut know. down then. Yeah. yeah. So what was the RSA again, Fred? RSA 288. Is there any colon? There's only one section. <laughs> no. so, I suppose 288 colon 1. Give it CH period. Huh? RSA CH period 288. CH. Yeah. Chapter. Oh, no, the, the way they read it, they put it like that. Okay. We can adjust that anyhow. Sure. Sure. So what do we need now, Fred? Do you need a, a motion? Well, if that's what the board would like to do, um, I would make a motion to amend the ordinance in accordance with this particular description. We can go from there and pre pre prepare the, uh, the warrant article and bring it back to you for inclusion at your next meeting, which would be the mm -hmm. first Eight. Monday in January. Yeah. Second Monday in Second January, Monday, excuse yeah. me, at 7th. We won't be here on the 1st. No, we won't be here on the 1st, but he'll be here on the 7th. Got a motion? Yeah, I'll make the motion to to incorporate option one as presented <laughs> and amended by the chief, by the chief and uh, put it forth in the warrant article. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. second. Discussion? All in favor? Four oh, unanimous. Uh, I'm an abstention. Oh. Abstention. 3 0. <clears throat> 3 0 1. 3 0 1. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs>